Why did you want to come to the school to speak today? It's always important, I think, uh, you know, to talk to, uh, to students about kind of how I've gone about getting to where I am. And uh, while there are a lot of breaks along the way you have to make, you know, hopefully I've learned a few things about, you know, learning and reading and being prepared and trying to live your dream. And, and I've been very fortunate in that I knew at a pretty young age what I wanted to do. And, and I think for the most part, my message is if you know what you want to do, uh, don't let anyone stand in your way and go for it. And uh, don't worry about the money and, and all the other things that, that come along with it. Do something that you have a passion for and that you want to do. And if I can impart that uh, today and uh, maybe give a, a student or two or 10 or 20 the idea that, you know what, I want to be a doctor and I'm, I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. Or I want to be a broadcaster. or I want to take Len's job in uh, 10 or 15 years. That, that's what this is all about. Growing up, did you want to be a baseball broadcaster and how did you pursue that? Well, I... Loved baseball from a very early age. I uh, loved pretty much every sport, but baseball was, was always very uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, I was a pretty average high school player, and uh, I knew that I wasn't going to be a Major League Baseball player. And I, I loved listening to the broadcasts in uh, Michigan of the uh, Tiger games, and I'd watch WGN on the Superstation and uh, some Braves games as well. And I thought, you know what, broadcasting would be, would be a lot of fun. So. I knew from a pretty early age in life that that's what I wanted to do. Um, I, I didn't major in broadcasting when I went to Marquette University. I was a, I was a public relations major, but I always tried to kind of keep my hand in broadcasting. And fortunately, I've been able to make a career out of it, and uh, got, I've gotten all the right breaks along the way. And I don't take it for granted at all. I try to enjoy every day and every game as they come, and uh, understand that it's uh, it can be very fleeting, and I enjoy every minute of it. What's it like going to Wrigley Field every day? Well, the ballpark was built in 1914. The Cubs have been playing there since 1916. And to be a part of that rich history, and, and you know, Cubs history goes back to 1876. They weren't called the Cubs at that time. But um, there's always something that you can kind of call from Cubs history that, that seems to be pertinent to a broadcast. And I, I feel like I've learned a lot about Cubs history. Uh, I get the, the opportunity and the, the honor of being around Ron Santo. Uh, Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks, uh, Billy Williams, guys like that are around the ballpark all the time. So that part of it's been really neat for me. And uh, just to look out at the uh, the green ivy and uh, the blue skies above and uh, see the, the bleachers packed every day, uh, again, it's a dream come true. You were part of the World Series with the Marlins in 2003. What would it be like to see the Cubs finally win one? Nothing like it. I think we all have kind of in our mind what it would feel like for the Cubs to, to win the World Series, but I think it would be better than, than we can even possibly imagine. And, you know, even being here and being a part of this Cub thing, that this, this amazing ride that, uh, that we're all on, until you're in the middle of it, until you actually experience it, people can tell you what it's like, but it's not the same. And I think winning a World Series here in Chicago at Wrigley Field you can dream about it, you can think about it, but I think the reality would actually be better than the dream.